Hello, and welcome once again to the Dental Marketing Mastery Series. This podcast is brought to you by dentalwebcontent.com and New Patients Incorporated. I'm Howie Horrocks, the founder of New Patients Incorporated. Along with me once again is my friend and partner and the president of New Patients Incorporated, Mark Dilatush. Welcome, everybody. This is Mark Dilatush. This is uh, Howie's not here. He's golfing or cleaning dirt off of his porch or something. He lives in Las Vegas, so he may be shading himself or drinking water or looking out into the sky wondering why no birds exist in Las Vegas. But um, we are here. We have a special guest. Lee Buzard is a senior advisor here at New Patients, Inc. Lee, say hello. (laughs) Hello. How is everything? How are you, Mark? I'm doing fine, sir. Um, I I want to know what the deal is with the lack of love for people that live in the desert. I mean, I know, I know. I I make fun of you too. Um, (laughs) So, you know, Howie and I do these podcasts weekly, and we talk about, um, you know, many of the lessons we've learned over the years to try and help dentists be more effective in their own marketing or even our own clients understand the the science and the research and the statistics behind the work we do for them Um, and maybe even spawn some ideas um, and some actions on the part of the audience where they can go out and uh, introduce the wonderful benefits of today's dentistry to the people surrounding their practice and um, who knows maybe even save a life or or turn somebody's confidence around so that's that's what Howie and I do and I was thinking about it and I thought to myself you know we've never done a podcast on being an advisor, not, not necessarily being an advisor, but the, the thoughts and the workflow and the prerequisites that an NPI advisor has to go through before they can settle in on a marketing plan for someone. Because I mean, wouldn't it be cool if we could make, you know, the hundreds and hundreds of people who are connected to this um, this podcast, actually thousands now, um, listen to this podcast, wouldn't it be cool if we could make them mini advisors, right? Where they go through the same mental um, analysis, uh, the same asset liability um, list, and the same prioritization of their marketing budget that our advisory team does. And, And then, Without, I don't want to understate the obvious, but an NPI advisor, where there's four of them, uh, five of them actually on staff here at New Patients Inc., they're responsible for analyzing a market area uh, and analyzing the dental practice and then building a marketing plan, which is um, within the doctor's budget and uh, within the range of expectation that the doctor, that that we have communicated to the doctor. In other words, we believe this is going to generate X. So that's the advisor's role. And then once the plan is agreed upon, then it goes to our production and our campaign managers to actually deploy. So, gee, Lee, I mean, you you get all kinds of dentists who complete their online survey on our website and ask you for all kinds of things. Um, What are some of the biggest misconceptions that dentists have when they engage an advisor like you? You know, I I think one of the, the, the biggest would be if I just throw enough money at this, it's going to solve all my problems. I, I throw enough money and spaghetti against the wall it's it's just going to work and and that's a discussion that that i have so many times about about you know 
Doc, what is your goal? What, what, do you, what are you looking for? What type of patient are you looking for? Are you looking for that long-term patient? Are you looking for just butts in the seat? What are you looking for? And so many times docs come to me and they, they say, hey, Lee, you know, I have spent X amount of dollars for the last year, two years, five years, whatever the period of time is, and I keep throwing just money here, there, and everywhere. And, and it's just the lack of a plan. And, and so, you know, they come to me saying, help me. What do I do? Yeah. So, the, <clears throat> so really the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just some kind of an organizational or some kind of structure, <laughs> right? Um, okay. So <clears throat> when they come to you and they say, you know, I, I'd like to have you build me a marketing plan. What are some of the things? What are some of the things you look at as far as assets and liabilities? Sure. So assets. Um, you know, I, I look to see how many operators they have. Um, I, I look to see what what's on their team. How many hygienists? A big asset. You know, availability. What what times of the day are they there? What days are they there? What days are they not there? Um, I look at their internet strategy. You know. Is it a great website? Is it a fully responsive website, meaning it can be seen on any size device from a smartphone to a tablet to a laptop to a desktop? You know, what is available to them? Do they have Google reviews? Um, you know, what marketing have they done in the past? How has that positioned them in the community's thoughts of what type of dentist they may be? So there's so much. Um, revenues, you know, definite practice revenues. That's something we look at as well. Yeah, <clears throat> you have to multiply a percentage times something, right, to come up with a budget, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, that's, that's where we really set ourselves apart as a, a full-service marketing firm, you know, for the world of dentistry. You know, MPI, we do it all. You know, it's, it's all under one roof. And it's, it's nice for a client to be able to just to reach out to one person or one team and, and say, what's next? How do I handle this issue? You know, um, and so when we when we're looking at somebody initially, and we're looking at revenues, you know, we try to guide them. You know, we always say rule of thumb is about five percent of gross production for the year. Now, that's just a rule of thumb. If you're in Manhattan, guess what? Oh my God! <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna spend more than five. <laughs> you know, you're gonna spend seventeen, eighteen. You know, you're because of the population to dentist ratio. What does that mean? How many people are per each um, provider? And so if you're in New York, you could be 17, 20% of, of gross uh, revenue um, spending on marketing to equal somebody that, you know, maybe is in Montana that, that instead of having a 1 to 400 population to dentist ratio, he's got a 1 to 4,000. Is 5% going to be enough for him? Oh, you bet it is, you know. Right. Um, he's he's going to dominate the area. So we have to calculate all this. You know, we don't, that new patient say, we do not just pull a box off, off the shelf. It's not like progressive. You grab a box here, grab a box there. You know, what marketing plan would you like? You know, every marketing plan is custom to each practice's revenues, goals, needs. It's, it's I always tell docs when I talk to them on the phone, I say the marketing plan that we are going to develop for you is like the treatment plan that you develop for your for your patients. We're going to look at the entire situation. We're going to look at the entire environment. We're going to look at the entire amount, and we're going to say, "Okay, doc, this is what we need to address immediately." You know, because a lot of times when somebody comes into a a, a doctor's office, a d dental office, they say, "I've got this toothache. This is what's going on." Well, sure, the the dentist is going to look at that. But they're going to look at the, the full survey. They're going to look at the full mouth. And so we do the exact same thing and put it in priority order. So basically, <clears throat> yeah, I remember when I was doing, um, when I was building marketing plans, I remember, I don't know, maybe seven or eight out of ten, um, we ended up actually doing less than, you know, the full mouth, right? Less Absolutely. than less than, than optimum. Well, and, and I, it's fine. I mean, there's nothing, 
I, I, I tell docs all the time. I had a conversation with um, somebody, um, ironically, yesterday. Um, you know, he shot, shot me an email, and, you know, the time worked out, and we just jumped on the phone, and I said, hey, you know, I understand that we need to do all these things, and we, he was concerned about budgets, and it's like, well, how do you deal with it in your office? Let's do hmm. one arch at a time or one quadrant at a time, but we have to put these in priority of, of, of need. What needs right. to be done first? And their and their and and their expectation. If you're going to cut down, I mean, it's just like a dental patient. If you're going to do a quad at a time, you're not going to get a full mouth result if you did one quad. Exactly. Right. So, um, as long as the doctor's expectations are down um, where they need to be, um, then almost any budget you can get started with almost anything. Really, Absolutely. I mean, there's, we can just start with referral brochures, right? And just start the internal referral process, war get that warmed up, get right. that generating something. So it's, there's always something to do. Right. There's, well, there's it, never nothing to do. Absolutely. In, you know, the, the conversation that I had with this, this uh, dentist last night, you know, one of the things that, that we talked about was integrity and brutal honesty. And, you know, and I, I asked him some hard questions right. and then he, he turned and asked me even harder ones. Right. And I love it when docs ask me those hard questions. I love it. What, what can I expect from MPI? What can I expect from you? What can I expect from my advisor? What can I expect from, from all of these people? And, and it, it's comforting to be able to say, here at MPI, we are going to be so brutally honest that sometimes when we give you the answer, we're going to pull the Band-Aid off. Yeah. And it, may, and it may sting for a second. It happens a lot. It, it, it? does. It does because, because you have to have these real conversations. Yeah. You have to – these real expectations. And, you know, they say, I've got this much money and I want to throw this at it and, and I want this many new patients. You know, and it's like, okay, Doc, that's fantastic. I would love for you to get that many new patients, but you know, we've been doing this for 28 years. I've personally been doing advertising and marketing for a long time myself. And, and you know, this is something that, that the reality is we look at the population to dentist ratios. We look at the hours. We look at your products and services and what you have to offer. Here's, here's the number that we hope that we anticipate that you get. Right. And, and we always, you know, we always roll that number down a little lower than, than we anticipate, yep. Yep. you know, because, because I would rather come in the hero, right? right and and right. So, so we always roll that back a little it's bit. It's the same thing dentists do when the lady comes in and says, I want my teeth toilet bowl white. Well, right. Everyone right? should have BL1. I yeah. mean, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing dentists do when they have a, a, a particularly, you know, picky patient in front of them. Right. Um. Yeah, I think, and then, you know, there's a lot of lessons here during that. And I'm glad, I'm glad we did this podcast. I'm glad we're doing it because there's lots of hidden lessons here. It's never about one thing. Yeah. I think that's one enormous lesson that dentistry is learning now. It used to be in the old days, you know, 10, 15 years ago. You could just do one thing. <clears throat> you could just do Yellow Pages or you could just do a mail campaign. You didn't even need a website. Or, you know, you could just do one thing and you'd be okay for four, right. five, six years, you know. And um, now it's no longer, unless you're in Montana, that market, that one, that, that, that unicorn market that you were referencing before, the one to 4,000. Right. Um, you know, for the rest of dental America, <clears throat> it's no longer one thing. No. You have to do it all right. <clears throat> and... um. This is why and, and where the, the, the quadrant or arch dentistry eventually leads itself to a nice, strong, cohesive, predictable machine, basically, that mm -hmm. just chunks out phone calls yeah. or online appointments, and they just come in, and it's something that, you know, they don't, they no longer really have to worry about, you mm -hmm. know, rather than if the um, marketing company du jour that almost every dentist goes through at least once a year 
You know, who right. am I going to choose to do my marketing this year? Yeah. Who am I going to choose to do my marketing next year? Let, let me jump in on this if I could, Mark, yeah, because, sure. because it, it, it brings up a talk, you know, a conversation about level of integrity. Okay. And, and all the advisors at MPI, you know, this is the level that, that, that they live in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and I've, I've had people come to me and say, I want to do television. I want to do. <laughs> They're and, amazed when we say no, aren't they? <laughs> they they are, and 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 there's so unfortunately there's so many marketing firms out there. I know uh, dental marketing firms that it's all about the sale. It's right. a, the sales guy. You know, he just he wants to make the commission. He's trying for a goal. Right. Sure, Doc, we'll get you a TV spot. We'll get you a radio spot. You let's make it happen. Sign here. God bless America. The problem with that is is they don't have the integrity. And where MPI does that, that when I have those conversations, I say, okay, wait, let's take a deep breath. You want radio? That's fantastic. Pull let's, the bandaid off. <laughs> yeah, here comes a bandaid. Yeah. What, let's make sure that we have everything in place. And they go, well, what do you mean? I said, well, doc, you know, if you're going to place a bridge, okay, and it's not an all porcelain bridge, but let's say, let's say it's, it's got a metal substrate, right? And, and you've, you've, you've prepped both teeth and you, and you got your hole that you're going to fill with your Pontic and, you have to have that, that metal base to it, right? Before porcelain can be stacked on. Does that make sense? And they go, well, absolutely. I was like, okay, let's go to your website because we got to look at your base, okay? Let's, let's see if you're prepped out. Let's see if your margins are wide open, okay? Yep. And then we go to the website and the website's a train wreck, okay? And right. sometimes, <laughs> and maybe, maybe it's perfect, right. but you know, a lot of times it's, it's, it's not, unfortunately. So it's a train wreck or, or I come to find out that, they shut down at noon on Thursday. They're not there on Friday. And what? Somebody's covering my phone from Thursday afternoon till Monday morning. Why would I do that? Okay, well, Doc, you want to spend ten, twenty thousand dollars a month in TV, but you're not going to answer the phone, right? <laughs> right. So, so that's no, where I, that's I where MPI says, wait, 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 wait. wait we right. want we we look at each and every practice as if we owned it if we were sitting on your side of the desk signing paycheck paying for the lease paying for you yeah. know the the dental supplies we look at each and every practice like we have an invested um part of it because guess what you know we may not be on your payroll but we're on your team and it is our job to make sure that our team does the best thing that we can for that practice and sometimes we have to pull that band-aid and say doc you can't do this yet yeah sometimes it's not really popular no, it's not. Mm. And, and, and so then what happens? They disappear. And then I get right. a phone call or I get a Facebook message or somewhere Two else. Two years later, right here yeah. they come. <laughs> yeah, my phone lights up and says, hey, do you remember me? You know, you, you told me that, that I can't send, you know, a mailer to everybody in the zip code because I'm wasting half of my marketing dollars. <laughs> right. You know, because I'm sending a message that's going to alienate one half of the market. Or do you remember me? I want to do that radio spot in my local area. And you told me my website was horrible and I shouldn't do this. Do you, I get these, do you remember me calls? Right, and, right. And guess what? Those, those clients, they remembered my integrity. They remembered MPI's integrity saying, no. Yes, we would love to have you as a client, but no, we're not going to do this because we know it's not going to be successful. What do right. they become? They can become our cheerleaders. Yeah, later on down the road, they they do, and and um, you know, Lee, you and I, we're gonna have to do another one of these at some point because we are we're running out of time. Um, because there's so much more the audience can learn from someone who does nothing but deal with the audience, right? Right. And and um, you know, it can it can help. It can absolutely help everyone listening to this um, be a, an informed dental marketing consumer. That's what we want. That's what we wrote the book. That's why we put the marketable attribute scorecard. That's why they're free downloads. That's why there's seven hours of uh, online education. That's why all that stuff is free. Become an educated dental marketing consumer whether you're a do-it-yourself, uh, I, I know lots of doctors who really get into 
the nuts and bolts of dental marketing, tracking, analyzing the numbers and <clears throat> making a tweak and, and, you know, watching the difference, whether it goes up or down to them, they're still happy. They just want to see the difference of whatever change they made. Mm -hmm. There's lots of people like that. <clears throat> they definitely need to be educated. And even the ones who might be just entering the dental marketing space, Mm -hmm. might be a little fearful of the 9,475 people who call themselves dental marketing companies, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, this is good. And, Lee, I, I really do. I thank you very much for your time today. Um, if anybody would like to reach out to Lee to discuss their practice, it's Lee, L-E-E, -E, at newpatientsinc.com. Lee, what's your direct line? 702 799 nine zero one six and and you know like mark said i mean i you know i'm happy to to talk to to anybody let's kick the tires just sit back have an iced tea and and and, and talk about this stuff you know it's, it's the getting the conversation started is one of the most important things you know you got to take that first step yep all right thank you very much lee and to the audience we will see you for the next podcast bye-bye take care we hope you've enjoyed our podcast today you can find more podcasts on our YouTube channel, on Stitcher, and iTunes. Also on our websites, dentalwebcontent.com and newpatientsinc.com.